Good evening, everybody. Today we'll be start. We'll be understanding what exactly threat hunting is, and uh, we'll be understanding how do we start, where do we do it, how do we do it. All right. Now, before we start with what exactly threat hunting is and how do we get into it, uh, first of all, my name is Abdul Mateen. I am the uh, I'll, I'll host the webinar today, and obviously, I I teach this course at uh, Infosec Train as well. All right. Now. Let's begin and what exactly are we looking at today and what is the agenda for today? All right. First, we will be understanding what exactly threat hunting is. Okay, what is the frame? What are the frameworks, the tools and the methodology in particular used in threat hunting? And what is the scope of what, what industries does uh, threat hunting support or which industries do uh, threat hunting is popular in or which industries require threat hunting? and where do we start as an individual and as an organization now, before we begin we will have to understand what exactly threat hunting is threat is any aspect or any activity or any action which which damages my cia okay now in threat hunting what happens is you go ahead and hunt down these aspects or these actions or these activities which tamper your cie confidentiality integrity and availability to put it in layman's term i'm going to search the uh, search the possible adversaries to me who is an adversary to me now when i say me it could be me as an individual or me as an organization as well okay now what happens is these are the threats which my organization could face right so any any organization could could face uh, among any or all these threats now how do we hunt these down for example i have data leakage data leakage is a threat to my organization how do i find out finding out is in short uh, uh, i would say it's synonymous to threat hunting right finding out that threat is threat hunting now uh, i have uh, I, I give this uh, analogy, okay? Now, if I want to hunt, uh, let's say I want to go on a hunt for some animal, okay? Uh, let's say I'm, I, I like hunting down, I don't know, maybe horses, okay? Now, in the entire world, in the entire world, in the entire globe, what I have to do is I have to find out which is the area which has more horses okay okay let's say amazon jungle has more horses now amazon jungle is so huge now inside amazon jungle which area has more horses okay okay in this area i have i have i'm known to have more horses okay i'll go in that area and sit then i will uh, figure out what time are the horses known to come i'll sit there and keep waiting with with my gun and wait until the horses come once the horse is there I, I'll, I'll shoot i'll do my hunt now the similar analogy applies here i have my entire organization let's consider entire organization as the globe okay now in the organization which areas are supposed to be the place where attackers can come okay maybe my uh, web server active directory my enterprise network right all these all these pointers so i will look into these now in active directory in web server what are the areas wherein attackers could exploit okay maybe the uh, areas could be my web uh, facing login page so i will have to hunt if there are any possibilities of people hunting there sorry uh, trying to log in or attempt to log in there Right, so I'll have to hunt them down. So this is how you scope things down and you narrow things down and find out where to hunt for things. All right, and what, what are the methods? Now, if I take a web server example, I might have to look for the logs or look for the details or hunt for any possible breaches, right? When we are doing threat hunting, the key thing we have to remember, uh, remind ourselves or keep in mind that we are already compromised. 
assume breach when you are doing hunting, right? If I do not assume breach, then I won't be able to hunt for anything. Everything will look benign to me. I won't get that uh, level of curiosity where I go and hunt down more. Okay. Now, in internal network, when we are when we are hunting inside the network, we have this reactive and proactive methodology. After an incident has happened, for example, someone was hit with a ransomware attack. Right? In, during the incident process, they will do threat hunting. Why did it happen? How did it happen? In proactive, in proactive threat hunting, I start preparing myself to hunt down the attackers. Right? In uh, there is another aspect of a net, uh, threat hunting that is the beyond net, uh, your network that you do in the wild. That's close to threat intelligence as well at times. Okay. Now, what are the methodologies of hunting now? Okay. We have machine learning, like analytics based. There are smart systems which will find out the hunting, and they are situational awareness based, meaning that. Uh, anomaly based threat hunting right what what could be what could be the possibility that these things uh, for example these servers will be compromised in which situation can these compromise uh, these servers can be compromised or endpoints can be compromised or this part of the network could be compromised i do uh, i i i for i foresee threat and start hurting on it okay and intelligence driven now, in intelligence driven, what happens is you will have threat intel from an organization, let's say um, CISA, okay, um, or India CERT. They say that there is a threat which is happening in the wild, which is targeting all the banks. Now, you have an intelligence that you have an intelligence that there are threats, the, there is a specific type of threat which is attacking banks if you are from a bank what you do is you start looking for that particular threat in your environment okay that that is intelligence driven threat hunting moving ahead what are the steps for threat hunting as i told in the previous slide we'll be talking about steps of threat hunting there is one thing you should have in mind when you are starting with threat hunting that is assume breach Right. It, it's also same as uh, it's also same as uh, zero trust network architecture ZTNA in ZTNA or in, in defense in depth no, in, in ZTNA you assume breach already correct the same logic applies in threat hunting you assume that there is something wrong in the environment and there is an attacker already right so in with that in mind you create hypotheses how the attacker would have came in already what would the attacker be doing right so you create hypothesis that he has he has uh, attacked my uh, active directory server and he is sitting in the active directory already you assume that this is the hypothesis you create he might have came in via uh, my phishing attempts or uh, drive by compromise okay next you go ahead and investigate the tools and techniques which an attacker could use in order to conclude the hypothesis you have right what you can say is that now i have this hypothesis that my active directory is attacked now if an active directory is attacked how the active directory will be attacked right that is where you investigate your tools and techniques utilize your tools and the techniques which you have in mind that these are the possibilities right and then and then when you have found out the tools and techniques right that is where you go ahead and uncover the ttps now the difference between investigating via tools and techniques and uncovering ttps is that you have a set of methodologies to hunt the attacker down okay and then you go ahead and find out different ways which they have already used meaning you you feel that they would have attacked your 
Active Directory or compromise your Active Directory using Kerberos, right? But later you find out that they came in via another way. You are searching for Kerberos thing. Meanwhile, you found some other thing, right? That is where you uncover the new new TTPs which the attacker is using. And then what you do is uh, in in the next step, once you have found out new methodologies which attacker is using, you go ahead and implement measures around it. When you go ahead and implement measures around it, then again you have defended it. You have defended that particular activity of threat hunting right then you keep on looping the activity you keep on creating hypotheses you keep on uh, investigating using your traditional methodologies uncover find new techniques which the attacker is using put defenses around them then again you do the same thing right threat hunting is not one time process it's it's a loop okay now, what Pyramid of Pain says is that the level of pain the attacker has to go through in order to in order to defend itself from being caught. Okay, what I mean by that is the level of pain the attacker has to go through in order not to be caught. Okay, to escape from the uh, victims. If I have, uh, if I have a virus file and I have an antivirus program which is checking for the hashes of this virus file. If I change the file a little bit, the entire hash changes, right? So I can easily evade the uh, antivirus program because the antivirus is checking for the hash. It is not checking for the file and the file contents, right? Similarly, if I have a malicious IP address from where I am spraying all attacks to all the victims if someone finds out that one particular ip address is malicious and they start blocking it i can just simply change my server to another ip address and continue the attack okay the same way if i have a domain for example let's say example.com if example.com is malicious and people are targeting towards it and people are uh, uh, I'm sorry if example.com is used to host virus activities or uh, any malicious activities drive by compromise if people figure out if the intelligence community finds out about this domain they will go ahead and block it they will say okay nobody should visit example.com in that case what I can do is me if I'm an attacker I can simply change example.com to example1.com and host my malicious services. Doesn't take much time. And then comes the network and host artifacts. Maybe there is one CNC server which you built with a lot of uh, hard work, right? And then uh, somebody finds out. You will require a little bit of pain to change the entire infrastructure of that malicious network. Then you built a custom tool right you have for example you have nmap now nmap is used for scanning right if you block the access of nmap they will have to write a new tool in order to perform the same activity now up above that comes the tactics techniques and procedure level now there is one common thing in the points which i discussed so far First thing is that the level of duration in order to escape these steps is increasing as we go high. IP uh, hash values, IP addresses, domain names, right? These will take minutes to hours in order to change. Host artifacts and tools, they take close to days or months together. But when it comes to TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures, now in this, what happens is it is it's close to impossible. For example, a two-wheeler can be drove only by sitting on it, right? You cannot drive a two-wheeler by standing aside it. 
you can drive a car only when you're sitting and driving. I mean, like, yeah, if it's a driverless car, that's a different logic, though, right? If you see a car coming towards you, you assume that someone is driving the car, right? If you see a two wheeler coming towards you, it means that it is on two wheels. You cannot run, you cannot drive a two wheeler on one wheel unless you are a stuntman. That's a different logic altogether, right? the same way the, it's not about what the attacker is doing why focus on what the attacker is doing instead focus on how the attacker is doing right if we focus on how the attacker is performing some malicious activity the chances of getting hold of them is increasing okay now you can say abdul there are uh, malicious hash files i know the hash uh, there are malicious files i know the hash i can block it what if they change i cannot now increasingly you say okay abdul i have ip i will block all these things but what are the techniques i don't know you might ask so the answer for this is one simple framework that is mitre attacks mitre's attack framework now attack stands for adversarial tactics techniques and common knowledge about the attackers right now if you see on the screen all the below four blocks are intel based hunting meaning somebody has found out it found somebody was a victim of it they found out about it and then they passed on the knowledge right that is intelligence sharing now you received an information that these are the malicious file I will go ahead and look for them. If they are not there in my environment, okay, I am cool. But in case of TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures, you assume a tool can be used in some instead of instead of someone monitoring what traffic is coming, what traffic is going on. If someone monitors what content is being uploaded, right? Then I can go ahead. So this is a technique. Uploading data to GitHub or any legitimate website is a technique of exfiltration. Right. So these type of methodologies are described in MITRE's attack framework. Now, if we perform inter, uh, threat hunting based on MITRE's attack framework, the probability of we getting hold of attackers is more and more right now based on the activities we do we fall in one of the level here on on your screen what you see is threat hunting maturity model i might be using hash values to uh, to the hunting ip addresses tools or ttps but where do we stand what is the maturity of my organization when it comes to hunting down threats there are five levels here okay now every organization falls in any of or one of this level now, the level one says and again pyramid of pain and threat hunting maturity model these were designed by the same guy uh, david bianco okay squirrel data released david bianco's threat hunting maturity model and uh, pyramid of pain was released individually by him now what the maturity model says is if you are using a traditional sim or ids or ips or antivirus programs or solutions to hunt down the threats you fall under initial level or level zero right but this is not considered threat hunting, right? If you, if your organization uses IDS, IPS, SIM solutions, traditional signatures, and all these things, but based on the intelligence which you receive, for example, let's say you are you work with a bank, or you are a bank. Now you receive an information or intelligence from organization xyz or maybe uh the cert 
cert india or cert us cert uk that this type of threat is seen regarding in context of banks now you start hunting you start customizing your sim your ips ids according to the intelligence then you fall under level one right in level two what happens is if you are hunting down threats for example let's say if you just go and google how to hunt for lateral movement somebody has written a procedure if you pick that procedure and follow it in order to hunt the threat then you fall under this procedural level threat hunting which is level two at level three you don't know anything about threat hunting you are not using any sim ips or any antivirus solutions in order to hunt what you do instead is you do this you you follow these steps when you follow these steps you fall under the level three of threat hunting maturity model right and then at level four right or the fifth level of maturity if you perform all the actions which we defined in level three not manually in level three you will be doing it manually but in level four what you will do is you will automate the processes when you perform new threat hunting when you perform raw threat hunting activities but in an automated fashion then you fall under level four okay this is what uh, the threat hunting maturity model says and every organization falls in either of this right there's one more concept which in uh, which is uh, mainly used in threat hunting is called as uh, OODA loop okay now in OODA loop what happens is uh, OODA loop was basically created for uh, military operations during uh, war fight or the dog fight uh, they call it as in this what happens in OODA loop is you observe for an activity okay and then you orient now in orientation uh, section what you do is you channel the observables in one direction and there you decide what i have to do with these observables based on the observables you decide whether to act on these or to leave these okay now if you see right how do i observe okay i have to observe what are the th possible threats to my organization i take data from multiple sources i take for example if you see network data uh, my uh, endpoint data intel data right i collect all the data and then i channel the data into a, uh, a process or into a I, I process it through a block which which performs uh, I would say analytical behavior, right? It it does the analytics and says these are the possible uh, the, these are the possible uh, malicious activities. Now I decide whether this is a malicious activity or a benign activity. For example, let's say you have an application which is custom built in your organization. It has never left your uh, network. It, it it does invoke some powershell commands and some it does this info.exe and all these things right it invokes command.exe and all now your alerting system says that this is malicious activity because your alerting system is trained or told these could be possible malicious activities based on the ttps which you have used based on the uh, miter attack framework which you have used to feed the uh, black box or the uh, orientation box its output says okay command.exe was executed on so and so endpoint now you decide whether to take action on it or not or maybe let's say uh, my organization.exe a legitimate application which is built for your organization is used what you do is you say okay i do not have to act on it i will leave it as it is the same loop continues in order to find more threats all right and these are the couple of frameworks which are mostly used in uh, threat hunting specifically miter attacks uh, miters attack framework now miters attack framework says that there are a lot of possibilities there are main techniques 
in order to achieve these techniques or goals these are the sorry tactics there are a lot of tactics which the adversary usually tend to uh, achieve or the goals we can call it as by these techniques now if i go ahead and monitor those techniques or those procedures how the attackers could exploit then I, I will be able to put on more defenses, put, uh, detect any possible uh, threat in my environment, even before uh, I get blown up on my face. Like probably I, I hit the headlines. Even before that happens, I can go ahead and hunt down the attackers if they are in the environment. And there are a couple of uh, uh, individually released uh, frameworks as, as well from Sophos and Group IV. They are they closely fall under the same category of what MITRE attack framework says, which is uh, tactic techniques and procedures based uh, activity. All right, and which industry or uh, who requires threat hunting? Every industry which has computers, every industry which is dealing with computers needs to perform threat hunting activity because Threats, threat hunting, what we are talking about in terms of information security is closely related to computers at the end of the day. Every industry or every organization which is using a computer needs to perform threat hunting activity. All right. And what are the tools used? Earlier, we were talking about uh, being in the initial level uh, zero or one or two. And there we spoke about SIM. Now, SIM is not only used in that context, but it is also used at level four, three and four as well, wherein you will have to process the raw data, right? You can use SIM. Mainly SIM is used for threat intelligence uh, during these times and uh, TIP as well, or threat intelligence platforms as well, wherein you receive the feed, uh, where you receive the intel from your feed provider, and then you try to map it to your environment and check if these threats exist in my environment and then we have analytics based uh, tools intelligence based tools and uh, situational uh, awareness based tools as well what are the uh, job titles related to related to threat hunters okay like uh, pretty much everybody who works with sog they can move on move up to threat hunting profile pretty much everybody who is uh, working as a PT guy or uh, vulnerability anal analyst, VAPT guys, these guys, they move into threat hunting. And even though they are in VA and PT, they can do threat hunting there as well. And uh, TI analysts are usually not much into threat hunting, but they, they do threat hunting activities as well. And how, how do we get ready for it? Okay, I, I want to get into it. I want to do it. I want my organization to perform threat hunting activity and I want to help as an individual. What capabilities or what skill set should I have? What skill set should I possess in order to be a better threat hunter? Right. So it's, it's not only about you being able to uh, hunt threats from a technical perspective. But there are a lot of non-technical perspectives or non-technical things you should be capable of in order to perform uh, better threat hunting. All right, uh, analytical skills are top-notch required. Uh, the ability to see patterns in two different uh, elements, pattern recognition activity uh, capability is uh, much required, and communication skills uh, most importantly, because. Threat hunters are the people who sit in uh, blue team usually, but they also partially interact with the red teams as well. Now, if you are unable to communicate that better, you, you will not be finding out threats in, uh, you will not be able to find, you will be unable to find threats which will produce some value to the organization. Forensic capabilities are the must, I would say network forensics endpoint forensics uh, capabilities not top notch not the uh, in depth but surface level uh, forensics uh, is is highly required and uh, solely how the endpoint or the network devices work if i don't know what is a cider block if i don't know how how uh, a network devices communicate 
what layer of OSI does a network, which device falls into, what protocol works on which layer, right? If I am unable to understand these, what, what is a buffer overflow? In order to understand buffer overflow, I should know how the bits and bytes work. So if I understand these aspects, then I'll be able to hunt down the threats. It's basically like uh, uh, you should know, uh, for example, if you want to be a, a inspector, if you want to be, a, uh, yes, if you want to be a police, you should know the entire law, right? If you do not know all the laws, you won't be able to catch hold of someone who is breaking the law. 